This uh, wasn't as bad as I thought. Good evening. I'm, uh, my name is Justin Katz. I'm the research director for the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity. Contrary to what uh, Director Alvidi seems to think, we are not the Tea Party. Um, the amazing thing about infrastructure and this whole issue is that we've got roads that need repair. We've got workers who want to repair them. We've got a public that wants to pay to fix the roads. The problem is we've got special interests who already have the money we're paying to fix the roads that won't let us do it. They're holding that money hostage and holding our roads hostage and holding the jobs hostage, saying you can't do this unless you come up with new money somehow in your economy to fix this problem. My, uh, it, it brings to mind actually something a former uh, chairman of this committee said recently, uh, Stephen Costantino, when he was, he, somebody had suggested that he was kind of in on the, the scandal of 38 Studios, and he said, well, look, I was just doing what I was tasked to do by my superiors, meaning legislative leadership. That's not how representative democracy works. The people upstairs are not your superiors. The people in Rhode Island are. And so I'm, I'm basically here to give you the message that you have options. Um, don't expect that you'll be able to go out and say, we had to fix the roads. A lot of the benefits everybody agrees on. We need new infrastructure. We need repairs. We need maintenance. Uh, you don't expect you're going to be able to go out and say, well, we had to do it, and this was the only option, because there are other options. Um, a few years ago, we released a report, uh, Spotlight on Spending, in which we came up with pretty easily about a quarter billion dollars worth of uh, reductions in the current in the proposed budget at that time. And in fact, uh, y'all actually followed some of that advice, whether we inspired it or it was just that obvious. Um, so that the first mention of this toll proposal last spring, we came out right away with the PAYGO idea. Hey, why don't we just pay with this, with the money we have? Uh, and judging from the governor's budget just released, spending item after spending item, the state is apparently has money coming out of its ears. You can find money to pay for infrastructure, whether it's the Republicans' plan or some other plan. Um, and once you find that money, like the tolls, it's, it's never going away because you've saved that money, you've adjusted your budget. Um, the big argument against that is we need this surge. We need the money up front uh, to pay for uh, quick repairs, which is why we at the center began to look into the P3 model, uh, which comports with the legislation that Representative Nunes has submitted. Uh, in our vision of this, the use of this model, you don't need public debt and you don't need tolls. Um, Representative Nunes described the, the concept pretty clearly, but the, to make it very clear, the partner is more like a contractor. Uh, they're hired to do the job. Uh, this is what happened in Pennsylvania with the Rapid Bridge Replacement Project. This isn't you know, privatizing roads. It's, it's hiring a contractor to do the job. Uh, so our basic idea was a P3, a PAYGO P3, P3 PAYGO, um, so where you would free up the money, which is in the budget already, we're already paying to repair our roads, and you guarantee that money to a private contractor who uses it to find their own financing. Um, and over time, and there are lots of flexibility you can give them to, in order to find uh, a, a package that works for them. This leaves no additional risks to tax taxpayers beyond whatever the payment uh, that's agreed for the long term is. Uh, and you contrast that with the inherent risk of things like revenue bonds. That's, it, just the bonds are no longer reliant on the tolls, but they're reliant on revenue in the future. There is some risk there. And you contrast also the risk of the truck diversion and other problems. And we talk about these gantries as if they're just going to be up there and have no problem. There's going to be maintenance. It's $43 million in the first place, and you have to maintain them. I, I, I drive by frequently the windmill in Portsmouth, which is now down because it fell apart just as it was about to make a profit, and it's been sitting there idle for years. I mean, you, these are the risks that taxpayers will bear, but a private partner could also bear. And frankly, you do have removing the benefit of removing the project of this size from the Rhode Island Department of Transportation, which uh, listening to the Director Alvidi for several hours, it seemed like the message was basically, we've failed miserably for decades. We're making changes now that only 10 other states do, and trust us, it's going to work. But in the meantime, before we've proven ourselves, here's give us hundreds of millions of dollars uh, and tolls forever uh, that at the whim of the legislature could become tolls on cars. Uh, this could all be put aside with private partners on a pay-go plan. Um, and what, looking at Pennsylvania, what we found was they, they, 
there are a lot of extra incentives you can put into these programs. You, there are milestone payments, uh, fees if they miss deadlines. Um, there are also fancy financing uh, ways to, to ensure that they, they hit those deadlines. Um, but the real key is that the government is on the taxpayer's side against a private entity. So you've created incentives where, where you've got your, your actual representatives and the people who work for you have incentive not to hide anything, not to try to slip anything by anybody, but to be on top of the contractors. Um, so to wrap up, the, the benefits well managed, this massive infrastructure project that we all agree needs to be done uh, will be a, be a great boon to our economy, no matter the funding mechanisms. You're still going to get all the improved infrastructure. You're still going to get all the improved quality of life. You're still going to get all the construction jobs. You're not going to get the damage of increasing the burden that, of what we have to pay for, infra for our government, increasing taxes, increasing tolls, increasing the risk. If I were a business looking at Rhode Island, I would be very nervous that my business, we do this every year. I read all of your legislation. It's great, riveting stuff. But um, every year, especially yours, every year it's like another little interest group that we go after them and say, hey, we're going to tax you now. We're going to give you a toll. We're gonna if I were a business, that's what would scare me. If I, moved into, if I move into Rhode Island, how long until this this the spotlight, this Ion Sauron, if you're a fantasy, uh, fantasy writer, fan, focuses on me and says, you're the industry now that's going to be responsible for our, our mismanagement for decades. Um, poorly managed, this project is just going to be a, another gift to special insiders and, the, uh, and uh, those who, special interests and insiders who prosper from corruption and mismanagement. Uh, you think of being paid to fix damage the on, the, on the highway. Um, <laughs> So uh, going through with a P3 pay PAYGO or PAYGO, however it could work for the legislature, uh, would take the risk and the burden off of the people whom you're actually supposed to represent. Thank, Thank you. you very much.